Hello, everybody, and welcome to the July edition of MultiCloud Happenings. I can't believe it's almost August. Quite honestly, the summer is flying by, and I hope it's going well for all of you. We're really excited today because we continue to offer new solutions for your workloads. And today, we're going to talk about the new Oracle Google Partnership and the interconnect for Google Cloud. So with me today, hi, my name is Tammy Bednar, and I focus on our Exadata database services, our base database services, and multi-cloud. And with me today are our two favorite people, uh, Suzanne Halliday. Hey, Suzanne. Hey, Tammy. And Jillian Silverston. Hi, Jillian. Hello, Tammy. Hi. All right. So let's get started. Of course, I have to say this because this is pretty new. And so anything we say, you can't write in a contract, but we are more than happy to share lots of great information with you. And while we go through this information, please post your questions in Q&A. We are more than happy to answer those for you if we can. If we can't, we'll get back to you. So now to kick us off with Suzanne and Julian, we want to talk about the Oracle Google partnership. All right, go ahead, Julian and Suzanne. Thank you very much, Tammy. Uh, so, Julian, you and I are going to have a little bit of a chat right now and just really talk about what we've been doing in this space, right? Because you've been really involved as the product manager for OCI Multicloud and myself and Tammy in uh, the database product management for this brand new partnership. So would you be able to just give us a bit of an insight into why we've really uh, had uh, these discussions with Google and from, from these discussions initiated this uh, groundbreaking partnership, um, which is our second partnership in addition to the one we have existing with Microsoft on a multi-cloud interconnectivity basis. I'm kind of looking to understand what what customers are going to get out of this. I mean, we yeah. have our other points here, but it's great with, with the work you've been doing. Yes, uh, uh, thank you, Suzanne. That, that's a great question. That's a big question. And but <laughs> I, 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 I would say that the, the simplest uh, answer to that is what we uh, experience as, as Oracle and our customer. We all know uh, the multi-cloud is the new norm. So for all our customers, they have workload in Google Cloud, they have workload in OCI, they have workload in different cloud providers with who we already had interconnected, we are working with since a long time. Um, and so th th there is workload everywhere. There is benefit everywhere for the customer. The, the customer are looking for to use the best of breed of each of cloud provider. Uh, they they have they have many reasons, and we will detail ma many of the use cases. So this is what this uh, announcement and partnership a month ago. It was uh, mid June. Um, was a really a, a, a big news because what it brings is this possibility to uh, innovate with Google Cloud and Oracle Cloud Infrastructure to combine both services in both cloud uh, with um, a, a minimal effort and with this minimal effort to be able to accelerate, to be able to uh, the speed the delivery, uh, to be able to or migrate your uh, some some workload that some workload that uh, the customer were not able to migrate from on prem, but also to combine. Um, so so really the the the, the key uh, and the partnership here is and what is uh, astounding with with this uh, announcement a month ago is we announced two two services. So one is coming later this year. We will, so please stay tuned. Come back in the next session of the multi-cloud happening. We will touch on, on, the, on, the, on the upcoming services. And mm -hmm. today, what is already GA is uh, Google Cloud uh, Oracle Google Cloud uh, Interconnect. Um, yes. And that, and this is going to be the focus of our presentation today. Um, but I think it's it's wonderful that we're actually coming together with Google and that we you know we're providing choice for customers, which is ultimately what our partnerships uh, are all about. And uh, we are really uh, a pioneer, I think, as a cloud service provider, forging these deep partnerships because it all stems around integration interoperability as well. And I know that we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. But I think as well with the first offering that we're going to be talking about is obviously negating the need for a, 
a connectivity provider, but it, it's bringing a lot more benefits as well because it's enabling customers for the first time to to actually have, uh, you know, from a commercial basis, Oracle um, deployed on on Google and have like you say these, you know, these these workloads spanning both clouds. And uh, I think you're going to go through some of the use cases with me uh, where we can really highlight what, what use cases are customers are using today and, and how it could be interesting for anybody listening, right? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Tammy. Next slide. So let's bring it on. The the, the, the first service, well, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> you know, that's right. Uh, so we're just going to pre briefly go over this uh, Oracle Interconnect for Google Cloud. As you've already mentioned, Julian, this is our first first offering that we're providing. And uh, here we're just summarizing the main points that we've actually uh, delivering to you as customers. And uh, this this is, um, you may have heard of um, an interconnect that we already have with Microsoft, the Azure interconnect. And now we're replicating this with uh, Google to provide these distinct benefits benefits and let's be very specific on what we're giving you um, with Google and we'll talk about where this is available as well but it's really a low latency high bandwidth private connection and this is an, you know enabled through one two five ten twenty or fifty uh, gigabits per second provision bandwidth for each of your virtual circuits and uh, we'll talk a little bit, touch on the pricing as well in, in a bit, just just give you an idea about that. But ultimately, what this is, is, is a fast on-demand uh, provisioned private interconnect with no data transfer fees across this private interconnect. And therefore, you're only paying for your ports uh, per hour um, on each cloud. Uh, we have a collaborative support model, which is absolutely imperative for customers, um, you know, uh, because they, they don't want to be uh, chasing chasing one provider and, and, and having the runner around. So we have this joint responsibility in terms of if, if you as a customer open a ticket with um, my Oracle support or Google support, we will both directly engage to quickly resolve that problem. Um, and you'll see that, you know, we do this through an enablement through our OCI service, the OCI Fast Connect and Google's cloud partner interconnect as well. So this is how it works. And at the end of the uh, presentation, we've got some links on how to set that up as well. Next slide, please, Tammy. Very pleased to um, report out of the gate that we have very pretty substantial coverage across the continent. Uh, for for uh, Asia Pacific, uh, spanning Australia, um, India, Japan, Singapore, South America, we've got Brazil, North America, we've got US East in Ashburn in terms of our region and the respective Google regions listed on the right, as well as Canada Southeast uh, in Montreal and in Europe, where we're represented in uh, Germany, Spain and London. So we've put this in a table format just because it's easier to view than a, a map. So it's clear exactly which OCI regions and the naming conventions are between us and Google. So we'll be making this uh, presentation available and uploading it for your reference as well. Next slide, please, Tammy. So as I mentioned before, this um, functions through the setup of OCI Fast Connect service. And these are the prices that we are displaying here that are publicly available on the OCI website and respectively on the Google website um, for the Google Partner Interconnect to. Uh, and we've just given a comparison here for, for the one uh, gigabit per second, 10 gigabit per second ports, um, just to give you an idea. And again, as we said before, there are no data transfers spanning this interconnect when traffic um, traverses through the private interconnect. Thank you very much. Now, next slide, please, Sammy. We're going to talk about the use cases for Oracle Interconnect for Google Cloud. And in this short piece, we're going to really be talking you through um, you know, what this brings in terms of the combined um, cloud services and how you could use them. So, Julian, do you want to uh, walk us through that? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Susan. So the, the big idea uh, with uh, having both cloud to be in, interconnected without any short party provider, so you can connect directly OCI and Google Cloud, is this inter interoperability. So you can connect 
any services in, in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure to any services in, in GCP. So you can combine and connect from your VPC in GCP to your VCN in your CN. So this uh, uh, allow you to leverage and to use as many of services, the large uh, choice of services, so you can explore, uh, and we will go into that, so uh, Gemini and AI, generative AI with uh, the Oracle database, but you can also interconnect the workload in OCI with the Google API and use the, the, the your workload in, in GCP, let's say your uh, GK, your Kubernetes, and, and, and connecting to the API in, in OCI or orchestrating AI workload uh, in OCI. So really, that, that's the big thing, uh, the, the, the key uh, that, um, uh, that you take away that you, you need to have from this uh, webinar is any to any, meaning that you can leverage all your investment in, in GCP combining with, with OCI and OCI with GCP. And you, and you can uh, uh, set up, for example, identity federation. So you can have your identity, uh, your identity and manage your user and password and group and air back on Google Cloud or on OCI, depending on what is your cloud of choice or preferred choice. And then you can set up a federation and, and combine both. So you don't have to manage uh, two identity. You don't have to manage multiple cloud. You can manage only one cloud and, and use the different uh, services and the, 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 where they are and combine them. So really the, the key is the, this interoperability. So next slide. So of course, the first use cases that uh, comes to mind when, when we have this uh, uh, multi-cloud connection is what we call full stack or speed stack. So you can have a full stack application in, in Google Cloud, full stack application in OCI, and th then make them communicate together, or you can have a distributed stack. So a speed stack could be your application tier in Google Cloud and your database tier in, in OCI and get uh, a, a seamless and, and a performant connection between the both clouds. So that this can be your use cases and your scenario for lift and shift, for uh, to to migrate your existing uh, uh, application from uh, from on prem. But this can open ma many more, and there is more uh, use cases that we will go uh, into the uh, next slides. Next slide, please, Sammy. Thank you. So speaking about those use cases, let's start just by talking through the AI workload, which is particularly prevalent for OCI with our latest developments of uh, AI services, um, artificial intelligence across the OCI stack, as well as GCP, where a lot of customers are using Google for such, uh, you know, data analytics uh, use cases as well. You know, because today artificial intelligence, it really begin, it brings that higher degree of automation to everyday activities, you know, across all industries, you know, whether it's transportation, shopping, wealth management, whatever you call it. And uh, we are very, very pleased from an OCI perspective about how we've actually developed our OCI, uh, excuse me, our AI portfolio um, by embedding AI entirely through our entire technology stacks. Um, and, you know, this is for every line of business uh, from finance to supply chain to HR. So we're really helping you as a customer to pragmatically use AI to improve on performance, but also for saving time, energy and resources. Um, so in this use case here, we're talking about really extending existing AI workloads uh, just beyond one cloud or another. In other words, if you've just been using Google for AI or OCI, you know, you, you can bring distinct benefits by combining the two in terms of cost optimizations, the best of both breeds, training the AI, AI model to run on, um, you know, the, the various um, inferencing on demand on OCI and AI infrastructures as well. And our 
for cloud infrastructure um, now includes unique AI infrastructure layers um, in order to achieve that. Um, and also for scenarios such as large language processing. And on top of this, we're really embedding AI in all of our products. So this is particularly relevant in um, Tammy and my, my world because we, we would, you know, in terms of autonomous database, um, you know, this has, and, and the database for a very long time has had um, machine learning built in to enable developers to add these pre-built models on top. And we're very, very keen to also talk about the fact that we have uh, the Oracle Database 23 AI now. And this has established machine learning capabilities um, in the database with the AI vector search and search store, we call it. And, you know, we're talking about vectors which are used to represent semantic contents of images and documents. And with our Converge database, that enables you to use both the business data and vectors when answering questions and really, really no need to move your data or synchronize that to manage multiple products, which gives massive distinct advantages. And, um, you know, you, you can you can be running this across both um, Google GCP as well as OCI now. So uh, this is a customer use case that many, many customers are looking to uh, with with all the strategic partnership uh, offerings that we're developing today with uh, with GCP. Next slide, please, Tammy. So you can, you can also build and combine your cloud native application. So you can you can um, help your uh, developer teams, and so they can they can use their preferred platform, their preferred tool. They can move an application to another. So you can have uh, uh, G, G, uh, GKE, so uh, Kubernetes on, on Google Cloud. You, you can run OCI container engine in OCI too. You can combine them. And, and, and you can also drive them using API and event and, and, and use the, the, the telephone because everything that we are explaining is, so it, what we are saying is, and we will show uh, briefly show you uh, through the console, you can set it up this interconnect with the low latency private link directly. It can be also done uh, using automation and, 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 and Terraform. And this way you can really uh, offer to your uh, developer, to your different business units, as, as uh, Susan mentioned, the different tools that they need to uh, fulfill their uh, uh, the, the, the business requirements. So uh, you can combine and, and access uh, OCI container engine can access the firewall base and store the, the, the document there, or you already have existing document that you need, need to be accessed from maybe now an, an Apex application that, that you will build on, on top of Oracle database, on autonomous database. You can uh, build your and simplify your, your pipeline combining uh, your cloud build and then doing the OCI API call to uh, set it up your autonomous database, to uh, uh, do a rollout in the uh, Kubernetes engine in, in OCI. So with this low latency uh, uh, connection between the 11 region in to, between Google Cloud and OCI, you can build new cloud native apps and you can uh, uh, expand on that and, and have a faster uh, de delivery of speed to market. Thanks, Julian. So next slide, please tell me. Now we're going to just uh, give you an example of uh, the data analytics pipeline use case. Um, again, very common um, use case that custom we see customers apply in day-to-day -day, um, business. So data pipelines, uh, just to be clear what they are there, um, they allow you to repeatedly load data from you know, an object store or export data to, to them. You can load pipelines from, um, you know, Provide, which, which loading pipeline, excuse me, provides continuous and in, incremental data loading from external sources. So what we mean by that is that as data arrives, it's loaded and and it's uh, very much in in that now. Um, in order to um, leverage a modern uh, data um, 
story and, and have data delivered to uh, your application, your solution to enable customers to make informative choices. These um, data transformations have, you know, they deliver real time data analysis and faster delivery of, of reports as well. And it's all about more timely informed business decisions for customers to make. And when we have this, um, you know, our, um, Oracle, our Oracle um, interconnect for Google Cloud offering, it enables us to um, have this workload spanning both of the clouds to ensure that you are leveraging best of both worlds. So on a on a you know on a use case basis, um, common scenarios where customers could have uh, data in JSON format. And the revenue information is, say, maintained by our departments and CSVs and Excels. And we want to load that data from multiple sources in parallel. We want to apply transformations and join some you know, information with customer information so that the downstream applications can analyze that. So our organizations can really integrate Oracle Cloud with um sorry, Google Cloud, with various aspects of, of uh, Oracle services, including, say, um, the business suite and many applications running on OCI using the Interconnect. And we provide a whole suite of integration tools as well on the data pipeline side to facilitate this. Next slide, please, Tammy. So Julian, I'm going to hand over to you so you can take us through the common architectures on uh, the Oracle Interconnect for Google Cloud. Yeah, well, thank you, Susan. So, but, but before to start, how to do it? Uh, and, and it's really simple. Um, I could even use more screenshots, but from it starts from the Google Cloud uh, console. From the Google Cloud, you go into the network connectivity menu. You know that you have uh, several different options. You choose the, the partner interconnect connection. You already have a provider. You it's, so you already have a VPC. If you already have a, a cloud router, you can use it. Or if not, you will, you will create a, a, a new cloud router. You select you select one of the region, one of the eleven region. You choose you choose your bandwidth, and you will get a key. Uh, this is the key that you will use in the uh, OCI console to set up your fast connect choosing the Google Cloud pro, uh, partner and provider. Going down, the, 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 the connectivity takes 20, 20 minutes, more or less, to, to, to set it up. So really, it's a matter of click, but also everything can be automated. And uh, I saw some question in, in the FAQ. I will share the links just after with the step-by-step with the step and you, you, with more screenshots than, than here on, on, the, on the presentation. But basically, you start from the uh, from the Google Cloud Console. You, you create a, a new v, uh, VLAN interconnect, a partner interconnect connection. You do a, this VLAN attachment to your, your VPC, and then you, you get the connectivity to uh, to OCI. So what does it bring? What, what are the different architectures that you can uh, support with this solution? That's what we will see in the next slide. So for example, to answer one of the uh, questions in the FAQ, if you already have a connectivity from on-prem to Google Cloud, uh, you can uh, use uh, Google Cloud as your hub, for example. So you, your hub will, uh, will be Google Cloud using a Google Cloud network. You can have uh, already a, a, a non-prem connectivity to, to Google Cloud using a partner interconnect, or it can be a VPN, or you can uh, combine both if you have multiple uh, uh, offices or, or, or sites. And, and doing that, Google Cloud becomes your hub. And, uh, and with the uh, Oracle, Google Cloud interconnect, then you can extend this connection in this next network to Oracle Cloud infrastructure and access the OCI resources from Google Cloud and from on-prem. So based on, on, on your routing, based on your uh, hub on Google Cloud, you can expand and, and ramp up um, this uh, network communication. So that, that's one of the of the use cases and one of the architecture that you can use as Google Cloud as transit, I would say. Then um, you can also 
uh, have a, a, a ramp using, uh, for example, you are in a, in a region where the service is not available, so you can do the interconnect between one of the 11 regions, and then you will connect to the OCI region that you are already using, and, and by that, you can connect, in this example, uh, uh, Ashburn and Chicago by the OCI backbone. So you just uh, connect and peer both, both uh, region. You can peer both VCN, and this way, Chicago can access the Google Cloud resources, and the Google Cloud resources can access uh, Ashburn and Chicago. So you, you can, you are, there is 11 region, but you can build on that to extend and create more uh, connections. Okay. Then fa finally, for each of them, you can use in OCI, uh, OCI network firewall and you can inspect the traffic. You can inspect the traffic, you can uh, connect multiple VCN, you can apply in, in, in OCI a hub and spoke strategy. So using one single interconnect link, you can uh, uh, have connectivity to your different environment, to your different uh, solution, uh, to your different uh, 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 application and product. As we mentioned, it's any to any to any. So you can have, let's say, you have a VCN spot, which is your uh, dev and test. Another is, is your UAT. Then you have your production. You can leverage the same interconnect link and have multiple spoke. You can, you can use a firewall as a hub, inspect the, inspect the traffic between between the different spokes and uh, and and in this way to uh, uh, route the the different uh, the, the different access and application. That's what you do in OCI. Then you can leverage the Google Cloud uh, solution and service to replicate the same and to have this uh, uh, data traffic inspection and intrusion and prevention on, on Google Cloud also. So. Having this new solution and this partnership brings you this kind of architecture today that you, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, build a new solution. Okay. So here are the links. Okay. Well, that went fast. I thought we were going to take longer, but we have some great, we have some great attendees with some great questions. So um, as you, if you guys want to host your questions, also, if you want to raise your hand and you want to ask questions live, uh, we have some time to do that if Suzanne and Julian don't mind. Um, okay. Hold on. So Tish raised his hand. Let me find, there he is. Let's let him talk and then we can go through um, some of the other questions as well. Okay, Satish, you're on, go ahead. Hi, hi team, good morning. Morning, yes. Uh, it's my, my pleasure to attending this uh, beautiful uh, uh, meeting and it's a fantastic. And I really appreciate for hosting this and I appreciate in coming days also, we'll have to have uh, such uh, uh meeting right so so my question is like you know i totally agree with you that today trend is going towards multi-cloud and all the customers they're trying to look the best option as per the base and bread services they want to go so let's assume that we have four hyperscaler your aws your azure your gcp your oci and all the workloads are running on all the clouds hyperscalar and they have thousands of routes, routes, security products and all. But, you know, from the day to operation, you know, so whenever there is an issues in any one of the workload, you know, so how do you simplify and optimize the you know, uh, day to operation so that from one console like Avatrix, which provide such simplified the management of this heterogeneous network, do you have any our cloud native tool which would replace the avatrix or otherwise what happened you know we have to go and log in on each and every console to dig the problem you know so that is the what the uh, you know right now uh, the biggest issue and in terms of management i am seeing right now 
rest is all fantastic no problem you know the only problem is that day to operation right okay. do you want to take the answer that or do you want me to start julia <laughs> I, I, I can start um because there is many different layers yeah. to, to exactly this that's question. just what i was about to say <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can start actually what we touch on um, and what is important with this partnership. And as you mentioned also, Suzanne, we already have a partnership with, uh, with, with Azure existing since a long time. So as you mentioned, uh, yeah. Satish, so having this partnership simplify also the support. So it's not only te technologically that we simplify the connection, but we have a collaborative support. Collaborative support means that you have only one shop. So if there is a, an incident, if you have a, or even a, a question, you open to one to, to to OCI or to Google, and if the issue is from the other provider, the support will follow up uh, the, the the ticket to the other cloud provider, maintaining your criticity and and providing all the context. So you you don't have to face the different. Uh, a cloud provider, you don't have to to uh, make the, the 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 management of different support, and this is why it's important to have to follow and to 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 use this this partnership. So with with Google Cloud, we have this collaborative uh, uh, support, like we have since long time with, with Azure. Second layer, you mentioned the different console. So this is why also you, uh, it's possible to federate the identity between the different cloud providers. So you only have one user, you only have one role, well, multiple roles, multiple group and one password. And this identity is, is synchronous between the different cloud providers. So if you need to log in to the uh, Google Cloud console, you do it with your user. If then you need to, to log in to your OCI console, you do it with the same user because the, the identity are, are federated. So you don't have to manage multiple accounts. But that was, I would say that's my first uh, uh, level of answer. Uh, Suzanne, if you, Tammy, if you want to add more. Yeah, sure. And we're aware of Aviatrix and, and the distinct benefits that that provides. And I think, you know, when you're looking at customers using the OCR as you're interconnect, they are using Aviatrix very heavily, as, as you've said. And uh, it will also apply here with GCP and the Oracle interconnect for Google Cloud. But as you've already mentioned, Julianne, the partnerships that we're forging is is aiming at a deeper level of integration. And without that interoperability between those two clouds from all elements, like you mentioned, Satish, as well, with, with respect to security, ease of deployment, um, it's of little use and little value. And this is where we are really focusing on. And we can't really talk about the, the up and coming stuff today, um, but it will be... Uh, later on this, this year then we've got some updates for you and we can we will be doing more um webinars around the next solution and answering your question i think more in in terms of how you can see this from a google perspective to satish as well okay satish you had a follow-up question I think the answer is worth continuing to thank you for the question, first of all. And uh, I appreciate you um, asking this question. I think we have some more work to do. I think we need to think about what a better solution, a good solution is for you as well. Um, uh, did you have a follow up question, Satish? No. OK. Or we can't hear you if you're talking. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you can so I... much. Oh, there you are. Satish, go ahead. Hi, can I talk? Yes. Oh, fine. Thank you so much. Uh, so, yes, like um, uh, Julian, like as you explained, that's very fantastic that, yes, so we can have one identity and they can log in also. That's fine. I mean, that's it. But, you know, the real problem on the on the ground, like as Suzy and, and as you discussed a while ago, like, you know, uh, the biggest problem is like the identify the bottleneck in the terms of issue like if something goes wrong with any energy or any route has gone then how can trace easily you know, rather than depending on the support team mm -hmm. like we all know right like avatrix does those because it's work on the overlay like you know it construct all your uh, uh hyperscalar network and on top of that it sits and it manages from one console simplified way right it can trace anything anywhere and you can dig the problem very quickly 
rather than going and find because you know customer they always look for the simplified solution and optimize you know where they can they optimize the operations and all right so i think if you develop such tool you know and so that it would be good for all of i mean all the partners you know then you can leverage you know because we are a master right we are a native we are a born in cloud so you know i think and more about like uh security right so no need to go and deploy security in each and have each and every hyperscaler like let's say i have app in gcp db in oci aws so again we have to go deploy firewall in each and every cloud provider not required in case of we have a distributed firewall like in terms of like evertrix if you take a reference that's simplified like one highway right they only mean multiple highway you know so that's how i think uh, if you develop i think it will be very fantastic for our customer you know but still uh, it's good so any roadmap plan like uh, like do you have any such common tool or which which you can leverage our native either a gcp or a oci i i think we're more looking from a native pers perspective whether it's from google or oci um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, of, no, I think we are person. we are looking at that. So thank you so much. I really appreciate your input on this. So uh, and, thank, and, you. thank you so much for giving time. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Much appreciate. Sorry, I disturbed you with this person. All right. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, Suzanne, you were you have you were going to ask? Uh, I can't talk. Answer a question live. Yeah, that's right. So, um, Alexis, you were asking if a customer is already on the journey with GCP, building out analytics, but the key sources are Oracle and OCI. How can we help them get quicker results or would this slow them down? Ultimately, it depends on the data and, and the use case of what the customer is trying to do. But in the fact that they have a workload that has a need to... Uh, you know, to actually span both clouds and the fact that you've, in your use case, you've mentioned that a lot of the sources are Oracle and OCI. I think it's, um, I think it's really prevalent to point out all the latest developments that we have been making headway within the Oracle database and take a look at how those technologies could help use cases and the actual um, way in which customers are accessing the data at, at that particular time. So um, to give you an example, uh, of course, if the customer has, has built out analytics when GCP is very, very far along and is only concerned um, in a Google world, then they would continue on that journey. But in order to actually get the best results from the data and these data sources are Oracle, you know, the Oracle database, for example, is a converged database. And, and what that means is it can run all sorts of workloads from geospatial to blockchain to analytics. And that means that it can handle any development paradigm. So I think your question is very, very key in terms of what is required for that project and what are the key requirements for the developers. And certainly we have technology that could glean quicker results in order not only to deliver the data, but also maintaining it. You know, like from a converged database perspective, we're not moving data around either. So you're not massively incurring data transfer fees and you're actually maintaining one database as well, as opposed to, you know, many other cloud service providers uh, are renowned for having these uh, entirely different proprietary separate databases to access data, which have to be maintained and data movement, uh, you know, is affected across each of those. And when you look at like, like for example, developer requirements, um, when we're talking about Oracle, a relational model is is really, really powerful, um, is, is very efficient. Um, it uses data normalization to ensure you've got your data to integrity, but it avoids data duplication and it, it makes the modeling and the, um, you know, like how you access the data very flexible, but it's not always the easiest for developers. So another example of where we could actually add value to developers is something that we've we've developed for um, developers who really wish to use a, a JSON um, and, and document databases are really popular because it enables them to really easily retrieve and store that data, which is hierarchically organized, right? Um, and then you have these JSON documents that allows direct mappings. And within 23AI, we have this JSON relational duality, and that unifies the benefits of both. So I'm just giving you those two examples of what the, our database can do. And, and these are very, very key um, 
you know, advancements because of the fact that it could actually deliver quicker results um, in many dimensions, it, depending on the use case. But ultimately, Alexis, it comes down to picking the best of breed of, of both cloud service providers and, and bring together in this really assessment of what can be achieved for that project and what we can deliver at that time. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Tammy. No, I, I, I completely agree. We have some great solutions for you. We would love to work for you, with you. If you want to reach out to one of us, we are happy to work with you, Alexis, on this as well and have a deeper discussion on it. But thank you for your question. We really appreciate you joining us today uh, as well. And then- with it, with, Sorry, okay. I just wanted to say also within AI, within the database, we've got some groundbreaking uh you know, enhancements within 23 AI as well. And like you say, Tammy, I think it really is down to talking to the customer and understanding what, what they need. Yeah. yeah. yeah I don't right. know if you want to add to that or <laughs> ask anything else. Well, Julian is going to ask a question. Uh, I answer a question. So Julian, want to answer your question? Uh, yeah, yes. So the, I, we have a question mentioning the slide 18. Mm -hmm. uh, where just TP connection is already available on premises, can replicate on premise database data to OCI ExaDB without required separated communication line. Um, I'm not very sure what you mean by se separated communication line, but networking, uh, another networking connectivity. But, but, but also, you know, that for migration, there is many different kind of yeah. use cases and scenarios. So uh, if we are talking about an offline migration or online migration, if it's an offline, you can export the data and copy the data to the, to the storage and, and restore basically. If, if, it's a, if we are discussing an online, because it's an online, we need a, a network connectivity. So you can leverage your existing GCP as hub and connect to, to your exadata in your CI and, and then uh, migrate your data. Uh, so once you have the connectivity, could be using um, data guard, could be and then using your airman, could, could be all. Oh, so really, if that's what is not clear in the question if you require the, or, However, you know, maybe, yeah, yes. maybe the the solution we're going to talk about next month that may be uh, more, maybe better for you. So you might want to hang tight on uh, the, making a decision on how you want to move your on-premise data uh, into Exadata database um, service on the public cloud. Um, that's one of those solutions we can't talk about yet, but we will at the end of next month or join us at Cloud World and you will hear more about the next Google partnership solution. So that's, I think, about as much as we can say at this point in time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. You said it well. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. That's Fantastic. All right. Um, also, um, Julian did post in chat um, the blog on step-by-step -step interconnect for Google Cloud. So if you want to take a look at our chat, that is out there as well. Well, I think that this has been a fantastic session and I really appreciate everybody joining us. We have a few more minutes if anybody wants to post a last minute question. Um, I we will um, I will take this recording and the slides. They'll be uploaded in the Ask Tom session uh, where you connected today. So you'll be able to uh, download the PDF. You'll be able to um, also uh, view this session as well. Uh, oh, can't see the chat link in, oh, let me see, to host, oh, sorry, Julian, hold on, let me just, thank you, uh, I appreciate you saying that, and let me just, let's see if I can copy this to everyone, there you go, there's, uh, hopefully now you can, uh, I, did I, everybody see that now, yes, to everyone, thank you for letting us know about that, okay, dismiss, uh, so Tish has another question. Hold on. So Tish, you have another question? Yes, uh, Tommy. Yes. So uh, this question is related to uh, from on-prem, you know, uh, connectivity from on-prem for one uh, 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 cloud provider to another cloud provider, right? Versa versa, as, as Julian explained, right? Like uh, is someone trying to connect from on prem, I mean, they have connection in GCP and they want to connect a uh, uh, workload in uh, OCI and then they can come from on prem to GCP, GCP to interconnect, then to OCI and then consume the resources. 
and they go in that way. Like, so do you have the same vice versa from the OCI side also? Like if you have, if someone trying to reach from you know, on-prem uh, to OCI, OCI to GCP. Yes. And then this to, yeah. and from GCP to their on-premises. Yeah, it goes both ways. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You can you can even connect your on-prem directly to OCI yeah. and then reach uh, Google Cloud. Yeah. Um, so you, you can use a, a fast connect to connect your on-premises. It could be with so with a dedicated uh, link like fa fast connect, or you can do with the VPN uh, side by side. So you have both options, just like you you do with Google Cloud, and then you. Uh, like we present, you can have your Google Cloud as a hub. You can also have OCI as a hub and connect to Google Cloud, leverage the existing Azure interconnect and connect to Azure. So uh, many use cases and scenarios are available. So but just don't like forget that yeah, so, with the private yeah. interconnect, it just offers yeah, so, distinct problems. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, Sujin. Uh, so it is just like... Uh, like uh, you're having on-premises, you have multiple data center for your enterprise spread across the geographically, and you're all interconnected among your own data center, and you can move from one data center to anywhere you can go. I think it is just like same, like it's another data center, like OCI is another data center, GCP is another data center. You can think in that perspective, right? And we can do the setup, just like on-premises. Let's like say... You, 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 but like with the um, OCI interconnect, interconnect for Google Cloud, there is 11 regions. So your on-prem can be connected to the 11 region on Google side or on OCI side. I think, Julian, that's a really good point to go back to. And I can go back to that slide. Hold on one second, I think. Um, on the regions, in order to get the low latency, the really good connectivity, you really need to uh, be in one of the 11 regions for this to work really well. I mean, and, and really importantly, Tammy, the, the application and the database need to be in the same region the respective regions on both our sides, OCI and Google Cloud. All right, good point. So if you are using OCI Ashburn, the interconnect would be US East 4 for Google Cloud. Oh, I see an inter... Um, so anyway, so that I think th that's another thing to keep in mind, Satish, as well as, or anybody that's on the call, um, is that these are the 11 interconnected regions in order to get that low latency um, connectivity. It's very important. important. It's very paramount, you know, like a uh, customer always look that what is the best and how they can leverage right. within, the, uh, within the given opportunity for them, you know? Yeah. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Okay. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. And I appreciate you giving me a number of times. Oh. Sure. Oh, I, no just to, I just want to add to the point as well is that when we're talking about latency and, and predictable performance, it, it should always be based around private interconnectivity, private connectivity, not VPN, which is at the will of the internet. So depending on your use cases and, and what you need, Satish, but yeah. And, and so then like uh, coming to the services, let's say you have any services which is not uh, uh, designed for application interoperability, but let's say you have app one and app two, these two are application interoperability, they can talk to each other, no problem. Let's say we have another application in uh, GCP, which are not designed to talk to uh, workload or access database in uh, OCI. Can you go a, a transit way? I mean, can one service within GCP take the request from other application and pass it to the database? You will probably, if I, we, we need to go into the detail, but you yeah. need probably a hub and a routing device to route the, the traffic. I believe you got my question, right? Uh, yeah, we got it. But, and I think what you're talking about is like a stack to stack kind of use case where you've got one whole stack of an application interacting with a different stack, but nonetheless needing to, to uh, either route via or tran do some data transformations via or, or pass the data between the two. But like Julian yes. said, we need to assess the, the networking uh, and how you would do that routing. But usually these things are, are certainly possible at a networking level, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Much appreciated. Right. Absolutely. Okay.
All right. Well, we don't have any other questions. And I think that brings us to the end. So again, thank you for everybody for joining us today and the great questions. And I think we'll close out this session for today. And uh, again, uh, join us next month as we come up with the next multi-cloud uh, topic. And I hope you'll join us. So look for us then. Okay. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Suzanne. I appreciate all their help. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.